Okay, everyone, good evening. And today, we welcome again you to our show, The Story Behind the Bow. And today, we have none other than Dr. Timothy Singh, the president of POS and the founder of POS. Let us welcome everyone in our midst and let us hear from Dr. Tim himself to tell a little bit about himself. Over to you, Dr. Tim. Thank you very much, Pastor Joshua, for inviting me. Uh, this is the first time I'm featured on Pause for Christ. So I, I'm considered a privilege. Yeah, uh, we we try not to, sh to showcase ourselves, but since you invited me, I couldn't say no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, two and a half years ago, I had the vision and connected with Pastor David Go, Pastor Joshua Tan, and we started Pause for Christ, which is poets, artists, writers, songwriters for Christ. And to date, we do have some amazing artists in our midst, uh, great in international songwriters. And even authors, our vice president's book has sold 5 million is all over the world. And his protege has just appeared from Amodago, Master Chris Ichamutu. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome, Hi, Christopher. Christopher Wanakam. <laughs> Back to you, Pastor Joshua. Okay, yeah. So, uh, okay. So, the book today we're going to uh, discuss is, is this book, which is written... Uh, in uh, 2019, if I'm not mistaken, uh, no, 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 sorry, 2020, all right, uh, to be exact, on the 6th of September 2020. And uh, for your information, this book has been given a lot of attention uh, by so called the prayer uh, warriors, prayer in a prayer vicinity. Especially, I want to put to you uh, about from, I, mean, I think everyone knows uh, this Apostle Julius Subi, yeah, and this is what he got to say. There is a global call and serving across the nations for children of God to rise up in prayer for intimacy and warfare to open the heavens and push back the darkness. But many cannot rise because they do not know how to pray. Now in this book, Dr. Timothy gives practical suggestions on how to pray and pull away from things that stop us from praying and quench the desire to pray. You will be uh, greatly encouraged to know that even short prayers can have impact. I encourage you to read this book. It's by none other than Julius Subi, founder and director of Highway of Holiness Ministry uh, in uh, Kenya. All right, uh, Dr. Tim, now it's interesting to have so many accolades, I mean, so many books written uh, by yourself. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, so we would like to know, uh, how do you come about writing this book? Or and rather, um, what is the story behind the book? So thank you again. And while I talk, if you don't mind, I just show the cover again. And I think the cover speaks of what was the intention. Uh, I want to encourage all the writers out there and the potential writers that all of you can write. And uh, in recent time, I've discovered that I never dreamt of writing this book, but it just came. So it was a family time of prayer. And um, I got all of us to hold hands in a circle, hold hands in a circle, and then we pray. And that got me to think, what are the ways to approach the, king, the throne of heaven so that our prayers are answered? Incidentally, it's not biblical to hold hands and pray because it's not in the Bible. But with that, I began to research and found about 40 approaches which is prayer postures of the heart, of the body, and of the mind. So this is not a, a doctrinal teaching like certain religious group, they have to do it in a certain way. But here I just, God just gave me one by one, 40 ways to come. For example, King Solomon, after he dedicated the temple, he raised his hands up to heaven, you see, and he prayed. And of course, other situations like uh, King of Nineveh, they just put on sackcloth and just went on their knees. So as it came, it became a book. And you can see the wonderful design by our design. My designer, uh, you know, Janice Kaur came up with this. I just gave her the thought and that is from her. And of course, Julius Subi just kindly 
agreed to write together with my pastor Lee Chu. Yeah. So it, it was an inspiration. And recently, um, a group came from South Africa and I was giving book and this uh, pastor said, oh, can I have a copy of this 40 prayer? So he took it and he, he has gone back to South Africa. So I'm not famous as uh, Pastor Joshua alluded. I'm just a small lamb from the East. Whether this reaches to the whole world, I will not know. But in God's time, I believe this is one of the few books which this kind of title, Prayer Postures of Our Heart. Yeah. And may I add that actually sometimes we just need one single cry and say, Lord, and that's enough. Yeah. Anything else you want me to say, Pastor Joshua? Yeah, there's a very interesting revelation or so-called, uh, you know, uh, uh, James uh, uh, into this book. Okay, now I want to ask this. Uh, of all the 40 uh, powerful prayer posture that you have listed, can you give me the three that is uh, your favorite? Say, say that again. Uh, there are 40 uh, powerful yeah. prayer postures. Wait, May I know what are the three favorite postures that you, you, know, you would like to... I think the, yeah. me, the most important is a contract spirit. That means in sheer desperation, you come before the Lord and say, Lord, I give up. I give up. And I had at least two instances. I was going to travel to uh, Malang uh, on a mi mission and I couldn't find my passport. And it was already 10 o'clock in the morning and my flight was 2 p.m. And I went on my set on the chair and I said, Lord, I give up. I can't find my passport. And then ding, the Holy Spirit gave me an idea where it was because I've been searching for it for three days. So I think that is the most important cry. Basically, there are, I think, about three parts, three sections to it. And I think it's just like when our child comes before us and says, Papa, please. And then it softens our heart. I think that's just it. Uh, the... That's one of them. Um, of course, uh, as I read recently again, if your heart is not clean, your motive is not right, don't try. You know, there are many, many good people out there. They don't pray. These are non-Christians. They don't pray because they know that they feel they're not good enough. But we come to the throne of God because we know by the blood of Jesus, we're cleansed. We've got a holy garment. So we feel righteous in his sight. But, you know, when we come before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm nothing. I, I don't deserve to come to your presence. And it's by your grace that I can come to your presence. So that sort of approach, you know, say, Lord, I'm not worthy, but you have made me worthy. I think that touches his heart. Yeah. yeah wonderful. Uh, yeah. So that is a very... Uh... Good explanation from Dr. Timothy. Now, by the way, where is the book? Where where is the book can be uh, purchased or can be well, owned by it's the? It's on Canaan Land. It's on Amazon, and of course, it through Brother Pastor Joshua. It'll be on Shopee and Lazada. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm not very sure whether Amazon has the printed version, but I think it is. I will need to check on that. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I just want to quote uh, from this book, uh, the powerful uh, prayer postures of the mountain. One of the uh, one of the uh, uh, what do you, what do you call it? One of the uh, chapter that is uh, interesting is portion number eighteen. You say prayer is warfare, spiritual warfare. The world is at war. We in God's mighty kingdom are engaged in war. What do you think is the most important spiritual armor that we should we can have? Uh, well, interestingly, I recently spoke on it so I can say it off my mind. Exactly. There's at least 12 uh, powerful uh, weapons that we can use. And I recently, in, in speaking about it, I ordered a book that I think is coming from South Africa or America in a week's time. I can talk more. And that book says 50 powerful armory of the Lord. But to me, uh, and from experience, the most powerful, uh, actually the a few that's very powerful. The, the name of the Lord is very, very powerful. But you have to honor his name and you speak his name knowing what his name means. And that is very powerful. But there is one very powerful uh, tool. Yeah, sorry to use the word tool, but it is the blood of Jesus. You know, 
when we mention the blood of Jesus, the demons scream literally and flee. And in doing ministry, uh, the brothers, I can't see, but brothers have seen it. When they pray the blood, they just drown. Because the blood is so powerful and it's the same blood that washes us clean of our sin. Just now you mentioned what are the three. I mentioned one is contrite spirit. The second is coming uh, in, in pure and holy as heart. But the third, I like to remind myself and others, we must bow down before the Lord, head to the ground. There are many Christians who have yet to do it. The correct way to come before the Lord is to bow down, head to the ground. Uh, and I remember when I flew to Barrio, when I reached Barrio Airport, I was so touched, Brother uh, Dr. Mega. I, I felt I need to do it. And on the airport, I bow down my head to touch the ground. Yeah, so praise yes, the Lord. Uh, there's so many ways we approach the Lord. But a simple way, a child's way, little baby saying, Lord, please, it's enough. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. As the saying goes, the purpose of prayer is not to get man's view done in heaven, but to get God's view done on earth. Now with that, I would like to open this uh, time uh, to the floor. Any questions from the floor? can put down there in the chat or can just raise up your hand and I will direct the question to Dr. Kim who will gladly answer. Yeah, yeah. Any, any question from the floor? May, may I qualify that I'm not an intercessor by gift or by mission? Neither am I a prayer warrior. I can assure you the times when I try praying and praying, I fall asleep and keep having to wake up. But you know, uh, of late, of late since I set up an altar and before the Lord, I begin to pray more. Pray is so very important. Yeah, that's awesome. excellent. They're yeah, talking about building an altar. Now, there's many house in uh, you know in uh, that we live in. They have reading room. They have a uh, dining room. And I'm sure you would agree that we should have a prayer room. What do you think, Doctor Tim? Yes, yeah, certainly, because the Lord dedicates it, and we see in the time of Abraham and Isaac where they reach a place and they know something has happened. They put stones in an altar before the Lord. And God honors it. So I have a mezzanine floor on the top. And I say, Lord, this is an altar. Now, I can tell you, many of us are terrified to set an altar because we do not know whether we can honor it, you know. But, you know, the I come from a Taoist and Buddhist background before. And many of our friends from the other communities uh, uh, who have just celebrated their, their day two, three days ago, they are more than willing to set up an altar and they can do it. Why can't we? So we come and set up a place and say, Lord, I dedicate this place to you. But we know that we cannot be so efficient. I'm, I can't be there even every day. But sometimes after five days, I've not gone up. There's something tugging my heart, say, go up. And it doesn't mean that we are in the altar, we'll see his presence here. But just spending time there, I know that he will manifest and appear to me. But just a short sharing. Uh, recently, when I said, Lord, I want to hear from you, and I keep falling asleep, you know. But on the 12th time I got up, I heard him say, The Spirit of the Lord is hovering on the face of the earth. And I was stunned because that's Genesis chapter verse, the first verse, which means that God has given his spirit to us, waiting for us to come before the Father to say, Father, help me. And his spirit works. Yeah, so I pray that you will all set up your little altar. You may not have an extra room, but there can be a little corner somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's excellent uh, advice from Dr. Tim, who is a prolific writer and the founder and president of Paul's. Now that you have, now that you have it, uh, from uh, you had heard from himself, the man himself who had written the book that is uh, going uh, into the international scenes because I can see that. Many people are looking for the book. All right. So we have concluded today's segment on uh, the story behind the book. And we're going to see you next week. And for those who have all come, thank you again for coming. And God bless you. Thank you. Pastor Joshua. Thank you.